good afternoon everybody uh, as dr amal is uh, stuck in the clinic at the moment uh, it's my uh, pleasure to uh, introduce our speaker today uh, uh, dr rajiv dasing i think he doesn't need uh, for the introduction uh, but uh, he's the consultant surgeon here who has obtained his uh, mbbs from pera uh, 98 Uh, an MS in 2008 with uh, MRCS in 2011 from Edinburgh and uh, he has had his primary education at Dunbaraj College Kandy and his foreign training he had trained in uh, New Zealand Wellington uh, and uh, then uh, the second year at Doncaster Royal Infirmary UK and he has served in many uh, areas in Sri Lanka in Kantale Vaunia Navalapitiya Ampara Nikaverati and Gampola and uh, in Matale in the last few months uh, and he's interested in uh, professional development as you can see the two lectures uh, back to back uh, have been on uh, some of these aspects a very important aspect uh, in um, day to day uh, medical uh, management uh, so it's my pleasure to call upon uh, Dr Vajira to deliver his lecture good afternoon uh, everybody uh, first of all i'll thank the uh, matali clinical society just uh, allowing me uh, to deliver this lecture and uh, uh, i think uh, uh, i'm little bit off from the surgery and i uh, talk about some um, professionalism and things a uh, few weeks ago and uh, again another topic which is interested i think uh and uh, it's the common mistakes we all do in the me- medical documentation so uh, most of the things are in the real life examples which i have captured uh, through the years and years mm, unfortunately most of the mistakes were done by my team here <laughs> in this presentation so i need not to take any consent for that because it's it's uh, under me uh so just see why is the medical documentation is important uh is it important or not the way most of us us behave we think that it is not important but it is very important because all the medical documentation has a big weight is a medico legal value whatever you write in a medical document carries a medico legal value so you are answerable to the courts and you are responsible to whatever you write even if you scribble there still you are responsible so doctor who does the documentation is responsible and the patient the patient in his view he has the right to produce this medical documents for the uh, legal purposes and insurance claims and other purposes and uh, it is it is the valued valid document for some administrative work in our country and not only our country most of the countries in the world it's the death certificate is a medical document so you have to be very careful when you write a medical um, uh, this death certificates other one is medical leave the party who allows this leave who grant this leave has total trust on the doctor who has written this and uh, so they they expect that doctors are not doing not cheating and not doing the frauds so and the uh, other most important thing is it it's a valid document which is to be produced at the courts right so we we'll start from the admission admission sheets we all have seen and uh, some of us have worked in the admitting admission room so uh, what it should be when it comes to the uh, admission of a patient even whether you are in the state sector or even in the private sector uh, we have to see the patient and evaluate the patient first not just the uh, uh, remote work right Uh, you can't uh, ask the patient to sit somewhere and say what is there what is the problem with you this and that and ask somebody to check whether this patient is live or not 
no doctor should evaluate and assess the patient and the documentation should be very clear not to scribble and uh, you have to identify the patient by their name and the other aspects unfortunately in our country we are not safeguarded with the law though we are responsible so in our co other countries most of the time patient has a identification number which they have to reveal which carries all the details of them but in our country patient has the right and has the privilege to come and tell whatever the name he like sometimes that the pay, uh, uh, name which he tells us may be a name of a patient who has passed away some time back so still we can't cross we don't have that right we can't ask them to produce the identity card or any identification but still we have to document the name what he tells us and thereafter we can't change it unless he proves that it is not him right so uh, if you happen to change it it's a, a bit advanced procedure so you have to inform the hospital authorities and make the correction in a proper way right not in a improper manner right uh, even for outpatient visits in the opd still you need to have a clear documentation before prescribing any patient right uh, most of the time it is not happening in, in our setup but it should be so there was one incident when i was working at one hospital one leading major hospital in, in this country uh, there was a one maternal death and uh, when the inquiry went on the mother's party said that she came to the hospital three times to get admitted within a week and on the third occasion she was admitted and at last the end result was a maternal death so she came with some pains in the lower abdomen and doctor who was in the opd uh, they e explain all the features and figures of the doctor and we could trace but we couldn't prove because there's no proper documentation there right when when the hospital authorities asked him he refused no it was not me right so these type of things are happening with the some lacking part in our system but we should do this it's a must Thank you. 